Hello there ladies and gentlemen, how are you doing? It's Alexander Hilly 123 here and it's time for a new video. It is time for a new pickups video today. And today I have for you guys one, two, three, four physical games and I also have three digital games, so a hell of a lot. As I always say, I leave it between two and three months between each pickups video. I don't want to saturate the channel with them, but at the same time, I always make the rule of there has to be at least three physical pickups per video. And I've got to be honest with you, as well as the, the games that I'm talking about today, I also have written down here on my list uh, another three games that I have purchased since all these, which I'm not going to be able to show in this video because it would run for too long. And also there is a physical and a digital game that I've also forgotten about that's not on this list. As soon as I've done this video, I will write them down. Uh, I have to remember that. <laughs> the hell. But so yeah, I've been purchasing a hell of a lot of games and I should really stop, but there are more on my list that I'm going to be purchasing in the next couple of weeks. But anyway, without further ado, let's start with... It seems ages ago since I purchased this game, and I'm not going to be talking about it for too long. It is Rise of the Tomb Raider. Now, before this game came out, and just as it was coming out, I remember a lot of the hardcore Tomb Raider fans wanting more tombs to explore, and a lot less constant gunplay and I was worried about that because when I played the reboot of uh, Tomb Raider back in 2013 I really liked the gunplay I really liked the bow there are a lot of modern games where a bow or a bow gun is coming into effect now that kind of hunter survival element and I love that kind of bullshit I really do and I enjoyed Tomb Raider 2013 but when all that came out like I was saying about the hardcore fans wanted I was on the fence and I was a little bit cynical because I don't really want that. Now I love linear games, but I don't I don't mind playing open world games. You know, I love Fallout 3. Um I enjoyed Fallout 4. Kind of a sandbox game environment as well I like, but I do like my linear games. They are my bread and butter, they're what I prefer. But I just didn't think with this game that it worked because this game is not that linear, it really isn't. It's a lot bigger than I thought it would be, and I didn't want it to be that kind of game, quite simply. Um, this got great reviews when it came out, and I can see why people like it, but I just don't think it was as good as people said it was. And after about 30%, I'm not going to lie to you, I didn't even get further than that, so I can't speak about the rest of the game. But I got about 30% of the way in and then I just stopped playing it because I lost interest. And the reason for that is this game punishes you if you don't explore. Explore the additional tombs and I think there's like caches and there's all sorts of different upgrades. Now usually I really like games where you can upgrade your character and upgrade yourself. But they never really did anything in this game. I remember there's kind of like some thing where you pull this rope. Um, and it destroys walls for you so you can get into additional areas but I didn't have enough loot or something along those lines I can't remember what it was exactly but there was about four or five different things that stopped me making not story progress but kind of stopped me in my tracks when I tried to do things in the game it's kind of hard to articulate but it really pissed me off and I just can't put my finger on why I did speak to who was it I think it was someone who came in my Twitch chat, and I can't remember the name. I don't think it's a person I've spoke to many times, but they agreed with me, and I was really happy with that. Because, like I say, if you told me to play the 2013 reboot of Tomb Raider, I'd have good fun. I didn't love it, but I liked it. But this is just not my kind of game. I wanted it to be more linear because the gunplay and the you know the core gameplay is fucking awesome, but the exploration bullshit just bothered me. It really did. I didn't enjoy it at all just a personal thing sorry if some people are upset by that but here's a game that i did enjoy and it's the kind of game that i've usually got a problem with but ladies and gentlemen if you like fast paced first person shooters balls out insanity you need to get on doom because this is one of the best first person shooters uh, made within the last five to ten years i would say uh, not that i know many but this is one of the daddies of first person shooters. I love the old Doom games. I played Doom 3 for the first time about two, no, about a year, a year and a half ago. About, yeah, about a year and a half ago. And I thoroughly enjoyed that, even though it's much slower pace. But Doom brings back that fast pace insanity of the old school games, the first two. 
And quite simply, ladies and gentlemen, if you like goa, if you like a horror um, kind of atmosphere and a hellish atmosphere and the setting of being in hell, obviously, at times, and obviously a lot of the game is set on Mars as well, the UEC or UAC, whatever it's called, um, you got to play this game. You know, it's the first first-person shooter game in a long time that after completing it, I wanted to play again. And I think I've got about 60-70% of the achievements on this game. I've completed it twice. There's no achievement. Like, there's there's an achievement for completing on easy, normal, and hard. And then there's a separate tiny achievement, just five gamer score, for completing it on Ultra Nightmare. Ultra Nightmare, if you die once, the game is over. <laughs> it's absolutely farcical. And I'm pretty bad at this game, but I enjoyed it anyway. I played on the normal difficulty, whatever that's called. But... It's about a month since I completed my second playthrough, and already I want to play my third playthrough. The upgrades make a difference on this game, and they actually feel worthwhile, the upgrades. There's shit tons of collectibles as well that are actually fun to get, but it doesn't get in the way of the colour gameplay. Hello there, Tomb Raider. Totally different games, but hopefully you guys know what I'm talking about. Basically, if you haven't purchased Doom, I recommend it. It's a great, great game. One of my favourite first-person shooters in a long time. Next on the list, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go digital, and I purchased for free off the, off the Xbox Live Arcade, Limbo, the 2010 puzzle platformer, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And then, a few weeks after that, I heard about Inside, the sequel, the spiritual successor to it. And I didn't even know it was coming out, but obviously, Limbo was free, to, and it worked, didn't it, for people who never played it. And then if they enjoyed it, they'd want to buy inside. And that is exactly what happened with me. Because then I paid money uh, to, you know, to get inside the game, the sequel to Limbo. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's a kind of old school 2D puzzle platformer. Very simplistic. Some of the puzzles are mind-bogglingly difficult. Some of them are quite easy. Overall, they're okay. I'm not a puzzle kind of guy. But I didn't cheat. I got through the whole of the two games. But some of them... Uh, God, what the hell were the developers thinking? But overall, really good. But it's this kind of crazy overworld, really dark and sinister. You've got, especially on inside the newest game, newest game, sorry, you've got um, ravaged dogs chasing you and these fucked up humans that are shooting a young boy because you play as a young boy and you're just wondering what it's all about. And the story, obviously there's no dialogue, but you kind of get a little glimpse of what's going on. It's this kind of matrix scenario, in my opinion. Um, and a lot of people have got a lot of theories on the ending as well, because there's two separate endings. But that's cool. It's kind of dark, and it's out there, and the developers don't really have to explain themselves, and everyone's got their own interpretation of it. But I thoroughly enjoyed both Limbo and Inside. And although they're very simplistic, and I've completed them both now, it's a game which, within the next year... I wouldn't be surprised if I just chill out and say, you know what, I've got a bit of free time on my hands. I'm going to play Limbo. It's relaxing. It's The ambience of the music on that, the soundscape, is amazing. And it's kind of relaxing within its disturbing darkness. And it kind of comforts me in a way. Um, yeah, I really enjoy it. And I hope we get a third game after Inside in a few years, possibly. Let's wait and see. But the next game on the list, ladies and gentlemen, is digital again, and it is Resident Evil 5 remastered now of course i've already got resident evil 5 on the 360 and i played this game initially back in 2011 um, it took me a few years to get it but when i did i remember having a blast on it i played it from i think it was may june july august september uh, of 2011 those five months i just blasted off completely on normal then veteran then professional got shit ton of the unlockables and the collectibles and the the jewels that are in the game I follow the guide on youtube to get them because how else would you get them you know there's quite a few secret ones that are very hard to find um, and i remember thinking this game is as good as resident evil 4 then i um for a stretch of time didn't play it came back to it after about i'd say two and a half three years not playing it and realized that it was a hell of a lot more flawed than i remember and i then uh, haven't played it since i think I think I played it twice in 2015 on Twitch because when I became a Twitch stream, I thought, well, if I can enjoy games and other people watch them, it'll make make it more fresh for me. And it did do that, but yeah, Resident Evil 5, basically, 
it's past the peak of the series. Resi 4 is the peak of the series for me, the last classic RE game that I adore. It's a lot of fun, Resi 5. It's much better than Resi 6. And even though it's more action-based than the Revelations games, I prefer it to Revelations 1 and 2 overall. Um, there's a lot of good things to say about it. There's a lot of bad things. Sheva's ridiculous AI. It can be good at times. Other times it can be useless. Some of the enemies are irritating beyond belief. The boss fights on the game are appalling. They're terrible. Um, but the graphics, the game looks gorgeous on the Xbox One. And it's obviously going to look exactly the same as good as on the PS4. Um, but I'm glad I picked it up again. Obviously, I've already got it, so you can call me a mug for paying £16. But it's my favourite game series. And overall, um, it was enjoyable to play. And I'm just about glad that I got it. But we've got two more games to come, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, the next one... Uh, well, these next two that are coming up are both PS4 games. About two months ago, I purchased a PS4, if you are unaware, ladies and gentlemen. And I've got two other pickups that are not in this video that are PS4 games as well. As well as the three other pickups, which are going to be in the next one. One of those is a PS4 game, and two I've got on the 360. Um, but yeah, it is my third purchase of this game. I wanted to see the intricate differences between the Xbox One version and the PS4. He's bought it again, ladies and gentlemen. It is none other than The Evil Within. One of the most underrated games on the Xbox One and PS4 era, if you ask me. This is what modern Resident Evil should be. It's got fantastic gameplay and gunplay all over the place, but it's also got this otherworldly, fucked-up Silent Hill bullshit going on as well. And it truly is um, a mixture of Resident Evil and Silent Hill. Um... And that's what I love about this game. It has its technical problems, the Evil Within, but the gameplay is incredibly fun. And I just love games that have this very delicate balance of action, horror, and survival. I think the most important thing for me is survival, meaning you get health upgrades all the time, enemies only take a few bullets to kill, but you only take a few hits to kill. The more you progress through the game, the stronger the weapons get, and it's just a natural evolution. You've got an upgrade system. This game, the first time you play it, if you play on survival, you will get your ass kicked. But you get killed and then you learn from your mistakes on the Evil Within. There are quite a lot of uncompromising difficult parts. But once you understand the game's mechanics, it becomes so fun. And, you know, I still do nightmare speedruns of this game. I'm like 15 minutes just over behind the world record. Don't think I'll ever get to beat the world record. Um... <laughs> because I know the guy who does it, but I'm, I'm pretty close. If they did leaderboards, I would say I'd be in the top 50 of the world because not many people are as fast as me at this game on the Xbox One. And that's the thing, the Xbox One version of this game is slightly better than the PS4. Sorry, PS4 fanboys, but this version is slightly more sluggish. The frame, weight, frame rate's a bit worse. Uh, we all know that the game has frame rate issues and it's got technical problems. But if you get into this game and you understand how to play it well, you might just fall in love with it. I just implore everyone to give this game a chance. When it came out, it got a lot of 7 out of 10s and it's good, but it's flawed. But personally, I think it's a better game than the next game I'm going to showcase to you. But the evil event. We're praying in a few weeks' time at the Tokyo Game Show, in two weeks, that we get a sequel. Please, for the love of Christ, give us a sequel. And also, give us a sequel to this game. Because it is the main reason I bought a PS4. As well as... Um, the E3 showcase, Days Gone, Detroit Become Human, the fact that Heavy Rain is on the PS4 now as well, which I really want to play, um, the Crash Bandicoot games remastered, Final Fantasy VII is coming out on it before the Xbox One, the remaster of that, or the remake, um, but mainly it was for this game as well, and it is none other than the last of us, ladies and gentlemen. And I've had this game for about a month now, and I have just completed my fourth playthrough, I do believe. No, my third playthrough, sorry. And I'm in the midst of my fourth playthrough now. Uh, I have a lot of things to say about this game, but I'm going to try and keep it quite succinct and short. I'm just going to Google whether that's a real word. Yes, I'm doing this while the video is recording. Deal with it. Succinct. Am I pronouncing that right, and does it make sense? It means short, doesn't it? It means to the point succinct i don't even know if i'm pronouncing that right especially of something written or spoken briefly and clearly expressed that will do for me <laughs> but yeah this game ladies and gentlemen story wise atmosphere ambience music 
um, voice acting, all absolutely sensational. Gameplay wise, very good, but I've got some issues. And at the end of the day, with my favourite type of games that mix together, like I said, and amalgamate this kind of horror action survival uh, gameplay, the gameplay is the number one thing. And incredibly, it's the thing that I think holds The Last of Us back. Now, I went into this game fully anticipating feeling kind of a, like a Dead Space 3 situation where you've got the alien monster zombie kind of enemies, blah, 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 and they would be more fun to kill than the human enemies. And incredibly, with The Last of Us, it was the opposite way around. I adored killing the human enemies and found it a lot more fun than the zombies because the zombies, the infected as they're called in this game, are like the last, not last, uh, left for dead zombies where they fucking run at you a million miles an hour and that kind of kind of turns me off with The Last of Us. Now I'm just going to say straight off the bat here that this is a fantastic game and it is a game that this time next year I will have completed probably another three or four times. Obviously the more I get used to it, uh, the less I play it. But there are certain games that I know I will return to, gameplay-wise, and this is one of them. I don't think I'm going to get as good as it as I am at The Evil Within and other similar kind of games that I love. But, yeah, I really enjoyed it. And my first playthrough, I completed it on hard difficulty. Basically, there are, I think, five difficulties. Easy, Normal, Hard, Survivor, and Grounded. I completed it on hard the first time. And if you haven't played this game and you want a good challenge but not for it to be ridiculous, play it unheard. You will get a decent amount of loot and resource, but not too much. It will be a good challenge, and I promise you, it'll be just right. As long as you know not to use... Like, there are some people, a lot of younger gamers will not understand what this is all about. You can't just go all guns blazing, um, and you've got to try and be resourceful. But at the same time, a lot of people said that grounded difficulty was the real way to play this game. And I do disagree with that. Because on grounded, you lose the heads up display, the HUD, the HUD, blah, blah, blah. And um, you don't see what your health is. You don't see how many bullets are in your gun. You don't see how many usages of the melee you have left and the enemies are so much more diligent and the clickers especially you've got to move very slowly around them and on grounded they know where you are straight away and i don't like the clickers now i'm not going to bother explaining what they are for people who haven't played them play this game but if you've played the game you might understand where i'm coming from here the clickers are a bullshit one hit kill enemy um and on grounded Oh my god, I died so many times. And it was similar to Akumu on The Evil Within. That's one hit kill on Akumu. On Grounded, it's kind of two or three hits and you're dead as well. I think The Last of Us is a harder game than The Evil Within, but most people think of it the other way around. But maybe I will be able to manipulate this game's mechanics and gameplay, because that's what it's all about. That's how you get good. You understand the exploits and bullshit like that. Um, but what I really love about this game, first of all, I'm going to say off the bat, I'm going to talk about go up to 20 minutes with this video it's an extra long pickups video mainly because i really wanted to talk about this um the bottles and the bricks as diversion tactics and distractions i don't think the bottles and the bricks do what they should do i don't think the human enemies do what they should and the evil within copies the last of us a hell of a lot and that's all i was hearing uh, in the build-up and in the like year before i played the last of us was seeing all these people who I when I watch people on Twitch play The Evil Within, they were talking about The Last of Us, and The Evil Within does copy The Last of Us a lot. And if this game would never have been made, this game would have been different. And I love games taking inspiration from each other and evolving, making a new game. You know, no one is going to rewrite the rule book up completely and give us something one hundred percent fresh. What we want uh, developers and games um, to take inspiration from others and then come up with something unique themselves because i played you know all sorts of games in the last five years that have reminded me of each other in parts and that's really heartwarming and i love that but then they've come up with something fresh within their own game that's awesome but the bottles and the bricks are mainly used in this game for throwing them in the faces of the fucking enemies run up to an enemy throw a brick at them and get the crowbar and then whack them i cannot express how that's satisfying it is to take someone's head off with a crowbar it's proper manhunt stuff it's brutal absolutely brutal but you only get a limited usage of the melee and that is so good 
that is survival horror in a nutshell you've got like four usages of a four by two by four plank and then a bit more of a baseball bat a bit more of a uh, crowbar and you get such limited ammo but i think grounded is a little bit too much you cannot really engage in the combat on grounded if you use a bullet and grounded the game will punish you on hard difficulty if you are clever and use a mixture of melee stealth kills and using your gun your guns on the harder enemies and play well you will be rewarded and the resources and the upgrades in this game they're kind of minimal but they are very fun and at the same time i kind of wish they'd have gone further with the upgrades but ladies and gentlemen i'm praying and hoping within the next year we get sequels to these two games and of course as well we've got the new game prey which looks really good on the ps4 as well that basically is alien dead space and doom all rolled into one sadly it's first person but it looks pretty fucking cool anyway and of course we've got resident evil 7 in january to come i'm gonna pre-order it because i want to support the series and i want to see what they have in store for us not happy that it's first person like i said in my um reaction video to the trailer initially the reveal at e3 but we'll see what happens at least it's going to be more of a horror vibe but anyway ladies and gentlemen in eight weeks time i will be back with another pickups video i've already got more pickups pickups games uh, whatever <laughs> uh, to talk about but i'll show them in the next video i have got written down here two games on the 360 one on the ps4 and there are another two on the ps4 as well which i've forgotten to write down and i'll have to write down as soon as this video finishes uh, as well so yeah there's going to be games galore really there's another two games i'm going to be picking up next week as well but this is the longest pickups video i have ever done i am rambling now i'm going to stop talking Whew. thanks for watching motherfuckers and i'll see you soon